Your Excellency the President of the Republic of Kenya, Dr. William Samoy Ruto, Your Excellency the Deputy President, the Honorable Kindiki Kithure, my colleagues in government, fellow Kenyans and participants in this very business-like and short but critical consultation with the President, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Your Excellency, I can only say that the PS has done uh, a in uh, running us through the outline of the emerging or evolving uh, foreign policy. But why we thought that it's so important is because we want to be able to domesticate foreign policy. In the middle of this year, when the young men and women of Kenya were raising some concerns, they kept on asking this question, why does the president travel? Not looking at the end result, but why does he travel? It even migrated from why to the mode of travel. And in the process, critical aspects of what emerges out of proper engagement at the highest level was being lost in that conversation. So it is our desire that through this kind of interaction under your leadership, uh, Your Excellency, we can perhaps coin something that we might call foreign policy machinani. So that we can get the ordinary citizen, the young men and women of this country to understand why it is important for a nation to engage with the globe. Try and imagine yourself living in a country with a dormant foreign policy. A nation that is like an introvert, does not interact with anybody, does not talk to anybody, what kind of nation would that be? The reality is that the President of Kenya, in the two and a half years or so since he took over, have dramatically reprofiled Kenya's image in the international area. I can speak with confidence because I've made so many trips. And the question in some of these fora is that, and what does Kenya say? What does Kenya think? That is important. For you, some of you who are politicians here, you know how it feels when you are at a public rally and a particular speaker speaks, and then when he walks away and leaves the arena, and you find the audience disappearing with him. It happens. But Kenya is becoming a pivotal state, a, a, a reference center, a, a nation where people want to know and ask and seek guidance from. That does not come easy, neither does it come lightly. So through this kind of conversation, how do we anchor Kenya's foreign policy? Through this conversation, how do we support it? How do we make sure that the budgeting process of our nation properly supports the foreign policy initiative? Bearing in mind there are also competing interests in other sectors. These are issues that can only come through if we build sufficient consensus and be able to uh, direct and know that what we are looking for has an impact on our people. So, Your Excellency, 
Um, I was not setting you up, but I was just saying, they were asking, why do you travel? And that was a very telling statement. It meant that there's a communication gap that we need to fill as a nation so that the bulk of our citizens can understand why international engagements, why meeting international obligations is important, both for our sovereignty, for our security, and for our economic well-being. So I will not say any more because the president will, uh, we are eagerly waiting to, to, to hear from you uh, and, and to guide us so that the final documentation uh, really captures the mood, the tone, the thought, the punch that you desire for this, this country. It is now my singular honor to invite the Honorable Kithura Kindiki, our Deputy President, to come and make his remarks and then invite His Excellency the President. Thank you.